We're going to open up the public hearing on House Bill 1217 and recognize Representative Burke. Welcome back to the committee, Representative Burke. Yep. Here's my card. Uh oh. <laughs> Is that for me? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, wonderful committee members. It's always a pleasure to be back here. Um, I've been looking at introducing this bill for over five years, and I thought this was the year. Um, I understand I probably will get pushed back on it. I don't understand. Well, I guess I do understand the pushback, but um, I hope that you guys will look at this bill as deep as you possibly can, because there is a lot of good in it. And why I'm calling it, this is the nurse to police bill, is what, what I'm calling it. My wife's a nurse. I am very blessed by God himself for having my wife. My stepchildren are nurses. I got a ton of friends that are nurses, and, or in the medical fields, LNAs, licensed uh, practical nurses and doctors. And, and what this does is, in nursing, and at first the nurses were against this, but now they all, when I talked to them about what I did here, uh, they said they support the bill because they said it helps. It doesn't stop all misconduct, but it helps. So if a nurse sees another nurse or another medical profession do something in a nursing home against a resident that lives there or a patient at a hospital, by law, they must report it or there is guilt. This bill does not go to that extent. Now, I did talk with six officers on this bill, New Hampshire officers. They support it, and I asked them, and I asked them why, and they said, because we need an avenue. We do need an avenue to really bring it out in public, the very few and very rare officers that are mis, you know, doing misconducts. So I asked them, I said, well, great, you're going to be at the Criminal Justice Committee and support me. And they said, absolutely not. And all six of them said no. And I said, great, <laughs> that's not going to help me. And I asked them why. And they said the unions and the Chiefs of Police Association is so powerful they wouldn't dare. So I sit before you, uh, um, you know, I, I would love to see an officer come here, but um, I just want you to know that there are some out there that support this. Now, this isn't the only reason I'm bringing this bill forward, but I want to tell you two reasons that really made me think about it, that this bill really needs to come forward. One was the car chase on the New Hampshire-Massachusetts border. You know, I don't blame the policeman for wanting to thump that kid. I don't know if I could control my emotions. I really don't. But our policemen must remain neutral. Their job is to arrest the, the dumb kid that sped down the road. But what happened is he jumps out of his car after he got caught right on the mass border and he spread eagles out. An officer from Massachusetts and New Hampshire, they both jump him and they pummel the hell out of him. Now the problem is, there was some stupid little helicopter news media guy way up in the air that they didn't know was there with a beautiful you know, you know, uh, telescope lens right down on top of them. And they're like, oops, that didn't work. So from what I understand, there are officers there that wanted to talk, but again, they're not allowed. The other case is the Ware New Hampshire shooting. I represent Goffstown. Oh, by the by the way, I am Representative John Bird. I represent Ware, Goffstown, and um, Deer. Um, it's the Ware shooting. It was at Land Cox. What happened there is this dumb young drug dealer goes to sell drugs in Ware, New Hampshire, at Land Cox. It was an undercover policeman there from Ware. 
the kid got scared and said, you know what, I'm not going to go through with this. So he takes off. The policeman shoots him in the head, kills him. Dead on the doorknob. The state police shows up, and this is only what I understand through the newspaper articles in from people in where that tell me about this. So the policeman, you know, so the state police crime lab shows up, and they're like, "Ooh, hey, we got a problem here. There's drugs and guns in there." That's what the officer said. Well, the state police went over there, and they said, "There's no drugs and there's no guns." And they're like, "Oops." I know Officer saw stuff and they need to be able to be allowed to come out and tell. So the union leader beat the heck out of the AG, saying, you know, because it was over a year on this Ware case, are you going to say anything here? You know, are you going to come to a judgment? And at the end, the AG said, we're sorry, we just don't have enough evidence. And I'm thinking, you know, if this bill was introduced, maybe they would have enough evidence. Because, again, you know, there's very few, in my eyes, you know, bad policemen. And, and the six policemen that talked to me said this is an avenue for them. Now, I quickly want to talk about the bill. This is to report misconduct and it explains what it is. The bill also says that you have to do it within seven days. So if you see misconduct, you have to report it within seven days. Now, nurses, you know, I think you have to report it pretty quick. Um, there's no, and then what happens is you report it to the chief of police, the chief of police has to eventually report it to the AG, and then after six months it's released to the public. So that way there's going to be no more lorry list. Now the disciplinary action of this, you can't do it. So if a policeman <coughs> does say, you know what, there's a law here that allows me to talk about this misconduct, this will protect that officer from being disciplined, fired, you know, etc. Now, at first, again, with the nurses, from what I talked with, my wife's been a nurse for, uh, I think, almost 38 years. Uh, she said there was a lot of resistance. People just didn't dare to. And, and I believe that's going to be the case here. So then a few people came out, a few nurses came out, or, or medical persons, and they said, you know, no, this was abuse, you know, you can't do this. This was misconduct, you can't do this. So then they started getting braver and braver, and now it's just common, um, you know, that they do this. And, 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 and it has cleaned up the, um, the majority of any mishappens at a nursing home. You know, residents feel safer because of this law. I believe the public will feel safer if this law is enacted because the public knows that the majority of the policemen are here to do their job. They're here to protect us and keep us safe. But they also know that there's a few bad apples in that without this law, the bad apples are gonna stay. And that is what the problem is, and that's why I brought this forward. Um, now, anyone knowingly violates, so if a policeman sees misconduct and he doesn't report it, uh, it is a misdemeanor. Uh, that was drafted in, and again, after six months, the public uh, gets to, um, you know, see what the misconduct was and how it was handled. So that should be plenty of time. Uh, again, this is just a real simple bill. Uh, police throughout the country are asking for more respect because, sadly, you know, the, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't trust the very few. And, so what's happening is it affects them all. Um, so when I see them on the news that, you know, we want more respect, well, you know, I give the police respect, especially the good officers, because I know the good officers, if this bill was enacted, uh, and this bill is nonpartisan, I got a lot of friends on both sides that support this bill, so I hope you guys really look at it, but I really feel that if this bill is enacted, that the police will have a lot more um, trust and respect with the public that are kind of leery today about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I hope you really look at this bill. Thank you very much. Timothy King? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Timothy King. I'm a uh, lieutenant with the uh, Concord, New Hampshire Police Department. 
I'm here today representing the New Hampshire Police Association. I'm on their, uh, their board of directors, and uh, uh, we're in opposition to this bill. I don't think, uh, as the sponsor uh, spoke, that this is a, uh, a simple bill. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, it's a complex bill. Uh, I was hoping that uh, I would have uh, one of our uh, attorneys here to kind of talk to the legal points of it. But as I vetted this out, um, uh, one of the things that I heard uh, on two occasions was uh, the quote, a solution looking for a problem. Uh, this bill, uh, much of it is covered under standard practices right now. Uh, the Concord Police Department has standard operating procedures, rules and regulation that require officers uh, to report misconduct. Uh, and within those articles, there are consequences for uh, non-action. In addition to that, the chief is required to uh, report uh, both to the attorney generals through the EES list, which is a evolving document at this point, uh, as well as police standards and training in a form B, which uh, as time goes on, evolves, and one of the later changes, latest changes to that is uh, resignation in lieu of uh, uh, when that happens. At police department, somebody's in an internal investigation uh, and they resign, uh, and it stops the investigation. That no longer happens. A reporting has to go to police standards and training uh, for notification of the officer's certificate that uh, they. There, there was an incident that was ongoing and that they resigned uh, in lieu of termination or some other uh, uh, action. So uh, between the Form B with police standards and training and their review, uh, between the EES and mandatory reporting, uh, and with the internal documents uh, of many of the police departments in the interest of Concord, I can't speak of all of them, we have rules, regulations, standard operating procedures. Uh, they cover most of this document. Uh, the uh, latter issues uh, at the uh, uh, end of it, uh, I do agree with the sponsor that uh, the incidents are few and rare. I think that uh, police in general uh, do a very good job. I think uh, I've had five chiefs in the city of Concord. I started out in Auburn, New Hampshire, in a small town. So I understand the small time dynamics as well as uh, the city dynamics. Uh, and with the five chiefs that I've worked with, um, uh, uh, we've always agreed that 99% of the time, the officer that the uh, chief doesn't want working for him, uh, we don't want to work with because we have much of the same, uh, same concerns. So I think it's a unified front uh, in that format. The, uh, anyone knowingly violates a provision of this section uh, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor uh, is very troubling, uh, as well as the uh, seven-day um, reporting because, uh, and I don't know all the particulars of the state police chase and the assault that took place afterwards. Uh, I do know that the New Hampshire State Trooper made some sort of a, uh, a, a deal, plea deal on that, uh, that case, and the uh, Massachusetts Trooper actually went to trial and was exonerated. He was found not guilty. Um, and it had to do with perception of what he was perceiving going on at the time uh, and uh, the dynamics. Again, I'm not an expert on that situation, but uh, the simple fact is that one officer was exonerated uh, by a court of law in the state of New Hampshire, and the other one pled guilty. Um, so in these dynamic situations, what your perception is at the time and the time it takes to process what exactly happened there, um, I certainly, uh, if somebody was in a dynamic situation on day eight, and he starts to think about, uh, you know, geez, you know, I talked to a couple of officers on that scene, and I, I'm uneasy about a couple of things now. Well, his seven days is eclipsed. Is now he on the T for a misdemeanor crime? And is that not going to kind of give him at least pause to come forward? Um, I know that in 25 years of police work, I have not seen um, some of the issues that were brought up as far as people failing to uh, notify supervisors uh, of misconduct uh, uh, because of fear of retaliation. And I certainly, uh, in the unions that I've been involved in, uh, I've never seen 
uh, pressure come from the union to uh, thwart anybody's concerns about somebody's behavior. Again, uh, the bad cough is a bad cough, and we don't want to work with them. And uh, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, this bill uh, is on point. I don't think that uh, uh, we need it. I think it's duplicitous. And as we all know, uh, the Supreme Court is dealing with some of these issues here. Um, and in the near future, they're going to have decisions that may rewrite the narrative on uh, all of uh, the uh, topics that govern uh, police misconduct and, uh, and reporting. <laughs> yeah, very quickly. Um, as I read the bill, it basically to me is if there's a bad policeman, you, they have a system where you go to the, I guess, training academy, wherever the board is. Now, when is that ever released to the public? I think that's what this main bill is about. Yeah. Is um, releasing all yeah. that to the public. Yeah. Is, and, and, and does that happen now? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know that that happens. I'm not sure if that's considered uh, a, a personnel issue uh, as an extension of the police department. Again, I was hoping that one of the uh, attorneys would be here to, to direct that uh, point to you, but uh, I, I can't speak uh, to that. I know that uh, we know in general that uh, police uh, standard training uh, owns your certificate. We only borrow that uh, as a police officer. Uh, so that's why they're notified and they have the ability to suspend that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
we wrote that position out of the budget, and he went off to another county. That other county, the same sheriff was transporting a female juvenile up north, and she turned him in for what she was happened to, to her by the same deputy. I got contacted by the Major Crimes Unit because they had heard a rumor about what had happened in Rockingham County. I said, that's not a rumor, that's the truth. So we arranged another interview with this woman. The High Sheriff of Rockingham County, the Major Crimes Unit, they both went over. I went over on both interviews. And this time, the guy got decertified. From what I understand, he's, in a, he's an electrician now in Florida. But it never should have happened that way. And I don't know if this bill would have, would have changed that at all. But it seems to me that when you have people in positions of high trust and they violate that trust, they should not keep that job. So that's my testimony. And that's why I'm in, in, in favor of this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our final speaker will be uh, Gina Huesca. I will, I will note to members who are here for the 1 o'clock exact session, like that. we are still having a public hearing on the 11 30 a.m. bill. It will be my intent at the conclusion of this to uh, convene the exact session at 1.45 so the members who have been here all morning can have lunch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. I'll be brief. Again, my name is Jeannie Haraska. I'm the political director for the ACLU of New Hampshire. We support HB 1217, but would recommend an amendment to this. Um, we support creating a mandatory reporting requirement for law enforcement, but would tie it specifically to their certification. Um, and so if you're considering this bill, rather than having reports made to the Attorney General's office, we would have reports go to the Police Standards and Training Council, which is the body responsible for certifying law enforcement officers. This would better mimic the existing reporting requirement for lawyers and for doctors. Lawyers report to the bar, doctors report to the board, because this isn't an issue of criminal prosecution. It's a question of their certification, right? This, it's the certification that gives a law enforcement officer the authority that they have, the authority to arrest, to detain, in some instances to kill. And so that's the question, is whether certain conduct warrants review of that certification. Um, and so to us, the benefit of this bill is it preserves the chain of command, right? The initial report goes to the chief officer of a specific department, but then there, there's a certainty that a report is made to that council. Um, and I want to note, this bill does not require any particular action by the Police Standards and Training Council. It doesn't impose a process, it doesn't impose a penalty. Just like in law, the bar and the, and the medical board are trusted to monitor their own licenses. So it's not that we're trying to dictate a process, it's that we're trying to make sure that reports are filed with that council. What they do, what process they undertake, we trust the council will figure that out. And I under, I've, I've heard um, that some police departments, maybe all of them, have some kind of reporting requirement in their policy. I think the benefit of a bill like this is it creates that policy in statute, where the public can see it. It creates a consistent requirement that applies across the board. I spoke to the Commissioner of Safety, actually, about this man the concept of a mandatory reporting requirement and i was told that the department of safety has such that state troopers have a mandatory reporting requirement but then i was told that that mandatory reporting requirement is not subject to 91a and i couldn't see it and my concern is anytime i'm told that there's a policy it exists but i can't see it i'm somewhat skeptical as to whether it really does exist and how well it's being implemented and so I like when things are in statute, when members of the public can go online, can find them, can look at them up, and can see what is actually legally required. And I just want to underscore, I, I heard the testimony about this being a solution in search of a problem. I think there is a problem, and there is an issue of public trust. I, I, I don't think I'm saying anything new, that law enforcement struggles at times to really have the trust of the public. And I think something like this 
could help. Again, if it's in statute, if the public can see it, and there's the sense that law enforcement officers really will police their own, that they are required to report misconduct within the ranks, I think that could build trust. And in our society where public trust really is necessary for public safety, you want people to feel like they can report. You want people to feel like if something happens, they do want to call 911. They trust who is going to answer that phone. I think this bill could help. Again, lawyers are already under this mandatory reporting requirement. That means prosecutors, defense attorneys, and judges already have this mandatory reporting requirement. So all we're doing is proposing that law enforcement officers have a similar mandatory reporting requirement. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Questions, Good question. Um, I'm concerned that the part that says that anyone who violates the uh, provision of this section is guilty of a misdemeanor, and then you go back up to uh, on line seven, that it's the duty of the law enforcement officer to report it within seven days. Would that mean if someone reports something after that, they're guilty of a misdemeanor? Is there a problem with having Section 5 in there? Yeah, I'm happy to see that changed, actually, because the way it works for lawyers and doctors um, is that if you fail to report, that can actually result in essentially an evaluation of your certification or your license, right? And so if, there, if that is amended to say, to, to, to result in that, that there's some sort of internal review, if somebody knowingly and willfully, right, fails to report, um, because I did hear the testimony about somebody who maybe it takes some time for them to kind of figure out what happened. And then the consequence of that yeah. would be, <laughs> the consequence yeah. of that would be that they would report that the, the violation would be as you described in your testimony. Yeah, so in essence, if it is discovered later that somebody knowingly and willfully failed to report, that could result in the Police Standards and Training Council then taking a look at their own certification, right? It kind of triggers the same process. Um, and I would note the same thing with the seven days. I've, I heard the testimony at that time frame being too short. I defer to the committee on that. What we're really trying to do is make sure that there is a, there is a mandatory reporting requirement in statute. Thank you very much. Thank you. For HB 1217, we had seven people signing in. Uh, we had four in favor. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, we had six people signing in, four in favor, two opposed. Signing in in favor, Representative uh, Tony Leckis, uh, Alvin C., uh, Bill Alleman, um, Timothy King from the New Hampshire Police Association signed in against the bill. Also signing in against the bill was Elizabeth Sargent from the New Hampshire Chiefs of Police Association. And uh, I'm having a hard time reading everything here, but it looks like um, uh, Adams uh, signed in in, fav uh, in favor of the bill. Thank you. With that, we'll close the public hearing on House Bill 1217. Uh, and I'm going to uh, thank you, everybody. That concludes the last public hearing on the first uh, first committee bills that we have this year. And we're going to start executing. I'm going to start executing at 2 o'clock now instead. Get people 50 minutes for lunch. So.